All right, good evening. My name is Don Kudo. I'm the County Engineer for Wellington County. I'd like to welcome all of you to this online community meeting for the Roadmaster Action Plan, otherwise known as the Roadmap or RMAP study. This is the first time the county has hosted a meeting of this sort, as typically we would be meeting with uh, you, the, the public, in person at an open house. So the county does appreciate your attendance and um, participation in this on lean, online meeting format. In addition to myself from the county, um, we do have a few county staff in attendance. Uh, Joe DeConing, who's our manager of roads, Pasquale Costanzo, technical services supervisor, and Emily Gomans, engineering services administrative assistant. Plus we have our consultant team from Dillon consulting on this uh, meeting as well. At this time, I'd, I would also like to recognize the county councillors who are attending this meeting. Uh, Roads Committee Chair, County Councillor, and Wellington North Mayor Andy Lennox, Councillor Mary Lloyd, Councillor Jeff Duncan, Councillor Diane Ballantyne, Councillor Don McKay, and Councillor Steve O'Neill. Um, those are the councillors that pre-registered for this meeting. If there's any, uh, I apologize. So the county has hired the engineering consultant firm Dillon Consulting to undertake, undertake this transportation plan. Uh, we'll turn it over to the Dillon team to go over the agenda for this. Great, thank you, Don. Uh, good afternoon and welcome to the Wellington Master Action Plan Online Com Community Meeting. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, my name is Zara Jaffer. I'm a planner and engagement specialist with Dillon Consulting Limited, and I'll be your facilitator for this evening. Um, please note that the meeting is being recorded and the presentation portion will be shared on the project website after the meeting. Um, so if you are, uh, able to only join us for a portion of it, or you um, would like to view the meeting recording afterwards, that will be available for you. Um, our agenda for tonight includes a presentation, um, which will provide a bit of an overview to the project um, and the, some of the key outcomes to date. And then we'll have a bit of a Q&A, which um, will have the opportunity to take the questions that were submitted via the registration, as well as any questions that you'd like to submit during this meeting via the chat, um, we will also have the opportunity if you would like to speak uh, and ask your question uh, verbally during the Q&A, you may be able to do that by raising your hand and we'll go over how to do that in a moment. Um, just to note that if you are um, joining us for only the presentation and Q&A Q &A components and not the discussion activity, we are going to be talking about the evaluation criteria that will be used to guide how solutions are selected and evaluated for this study um, as part of the discussion activity. So if you happen to miss that, a survey will be made available on the project website where you can provide your feedback. Um, so don't worry if you're not able to stay for the full duration of the meeting, there will be other opportunities to provide your feedback after this meeting as well. Um, next slide, please, Kate. Sorry, next slide. So the meeting guide for today, um, there will be a project overview and recommendations. Please note that we'll be asking you to stay on mute during the main session. Um, as noted, you will be using the chat bar to ask any questions and then participating via the Q&A at the end of the presentation uh, for a more focused discussion. Next slide. If you would like to submit a question via the chat, you will see the chat box at the bottom of your screen that you can click on and your questions will come through to me and we will address them during the Q&A portion of the meeting. 
If you would like to raise your hand and ask a question verbally during the Q&A, you will be able to do that by clicking on the participants tab um, and then clicking on the raise hand button um, that will appear at the bottom right of your screen. Um, okay, so that is all we have in the way of housekeeping. I'd now like to welcome Dennis Carr, the project manager and transportation planner from Dillon Consulting Limited to take us through the presentation component for this evening. Dennis. Uh, thanks very much, Zara. So I'm just gonna go over a quick introduction to the RMAP and the overall purpose of the study that we've been undertaking since September of 2020. So the RMAP is a transportation master plan that we're undertaking on behalf of the county. And the goal or the, or the purpose of the RMAP is to identify the long-term transportation network that's required to support population and employment growth to the year 2041. Also to address existing speeding and safety concerns and develop a policy tool to provide transparency on how future issues are addressed, to integrate recommendations with other planning efforts within the county uh, and to neighboring municipalities and to identify priorities and costs associated with transportation improvements. Uh, next slide, please. We began a study uh, in September of 2020 re reviewing the context and the background of the community. An initial round of engagement was completed to confirm the vision and the goals of the plan and to identify key issues on the county roads using an interactive mapping tool. Our initial focus was on addressing short-term operational concerns around safety, speeding, and localized congestion. And over the past few months, we've focused our attention on long-term planning, identifying county roads that will experience significant delays by 2041, and then assessing alternative solutions that will solve the problem. This is the focus of tonight's community meeting and what we're seeking input on. Next slide, please. At the beginning of the study, we identified a vision and corresponding goals for the master plan. Vision captures what the county aspires to be while goals are corresponding outcomes that support the vision. We vetted the vision and the goals during the previous online engagement session and received strong support. So the vision, to connect people and goods across the county safely conveniently, efficiently, and, sustain and sustainably. And these are sort of the broad values and principles uh, on which many of the recommendations and many of the actions that we take adhere to. To support these, this vision, we've identified a number of goals. It's to create a transportation network with a focus on safety, to provide sustainable and equitable mobility options that connect communities, to be, be proactive in the planning for future expansion of the county road network based on a complete streets principle that takes into account all modes, to make investment decisions that are environmentally responsible and support economic development, and to be fiscally responsible when making investment decisions. We've also identified a couple of process goals, and these are to develop transparent policy tools that guide investment decisions in the transportation network, and also to create a culture of collaboration with municipal stakeholders where the county So these goals are used as a basis for evaluating alternatives and decision making and we'll make that link clear as we go forward with this presentation. So before assessing the future, it's important to understand uh, how we move on county roads today. Like most rural municipalities, over 91% of trips are made by private automobile, either as a driver or as a passenger. While there is some transit with ride well and active transportation, the long distance nature of trips and low density development limit the potential to shift significantly to these modes. However, they still are important to provide access and equity of mobility options. In terms of where people travel, over 73% of trips are made within the county or the city of Guelph. So the significant majority of local travel. The next highest destination is to the, the region of Waterloo at about 12%. So by 2041, how, will, how we move will change. Population is projected to grow by 46% and employment by 52%. Coupled with growth pressures in the surrounding municipalities, this will place additional demand on the roadway network. This will result in an increase in the number of roads that experience uh, growth in traffic and subsequent delays. These are illustrated on the map as roads uh, in red and orange, and we'll further discuss some of these as we move forward. 
So what are the key issues and how does the RMAP address them? I'm gonna turn it over to my colleague, Paul Bumstead to explain. Thank you, Dennis, and uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, the purpose of the, of the next sequence of slides is to provide an overview of how we identify our problem, how we assess the future conditions and identify uh, network issues moving forward to 2041. It's important to understand how we identify a capacity problem in the network. Uh, you saw that the graphic that Dennis showed with the volume to capacity, which is the traffic volume compared to the road capacity available. Uh, and where we have uh, volumes to capacity ratio that exceed one or 100% of the capacity, that's considered to be a significant delay. And flow will be unstable uh, and longer travel times will be experienced. And it is something that needs to be uh, fixed or corrected. In terms of uh, other problems uh, where we monitor what is, what is happening, where the uh, moderate delays are happening, the volume capacity is under one, but approaching one. Travel will be unreliable. Travel times will be will fluctuate depending on the time of day, and we consider that something that needs to be monitored. Next slide, please. Then, what happens if we do nothing? Uh, with with increases in delays, the future county roads will experience both delays to travelers that results in decreased mobility, increased vehicle operating costs, increased speeding on other roads to make up for lost time. We experience diversion of vehicles to local roads, and local roads are not designed for high volumes of vehicles. This can result in safety issues for vehicles and residents, as well as increased maintenance and improvement costs on the county part. And the third element is increased out-of-way travel, which results in increased vehicle operating costs and increased vehicle emissions. Next slide, please. So the specific problems that were identified in the 2041 horizon those that exceed the practical capacity or will experience significant delay include five roadway sections, Wellington Road 7 between Aurora, Salem, and Highway 6 Junction, Wellington Road 18 between Wellington Road 21 in Aurora and Wellington Road 43 in Fergus, Wellington Road 32 between Wellington Road 124 and Highway 7, Wellington Road 46 between Maltby Road and Wellington Road 34, and Wellington Road 124 between the regional Waterloo boundary limits and the city of Guelph boundary limits. Approaching capacity uh, by 2041 or experiencing moderate delay. Wellington Road 21 between Wellington Road 7, Aurora, and the regional Waterloo boundary limits. And Wellington Road 86 between Wellington Road 10 and Wellington Road. In terms of addressing these uh, areas of concern, we begin with a list of uh, alternative strategies or solutions, and they really are in three buckets. The first bucket is travel demand management, or what we call TDM. And this uh, initiative is an attempt to modify travel behavior, uh, reduce vehicle use by shifting travel to other modes. The second, is the transportation systems management, or TSM. And this strategy aims to optimize infrastructure to improve performance. That means taking the existing environment and changing it in some way that it is more efficient. And that can be improving the quality of the roadway, for example, road service or paving shoulders, uh, use of technology. Uh, in the case of urban areas, you can try traffic signal coordination or providing additional turning lanes. And the impact of that in terms of success or magnitude of effect is, is medium. And then the third strategy is the increase of supply and transportation infrastructure. Expanding in infrastructure means uh, widening roads and adding new infrastructure means creating a new road or extending a new road. And the potential impact in terms of effect on congestion is considered high. Next slide, please. Now the question is, how do we determine the right solution for each area of concern? 
Each of the alternatives that we identify uh, to address the prevailing issue is evaluated based on criteria groups. So that being transportation, natural environment, Slide, please. Now, within each of these criteria groups, we consider more specific criteria. And these criteria are aligned with the uh, vision and goals that Dennis outlined uh, earlier in this presentation, the eight uh, uh, vision and goals. And in terms of transportation, the, we're trying to support creating a transportation network with a focus on safety providing sustainable and equitable mobility options that connect communities, and being proactive in planning for future expansion of the county road network based on complete streets principles. And that means and then the connectivity to serve local. We look at the uh, ability of the alternative to maintain or enhance capacity of the network. We look at its ability to provide a safe environment and reduce collision potential, the ability to support movement of goods, the ability to uh, mitigate or minimize noise impacts, to support active transportation, and to minimize directly impacted residences. Next slide, please. In terms of natural environment criteria, we're, we're trying to support the vision that we're making investment decisions that are environmentally responsible. The criteria that we're reviewing, natural hazard areas, air quality, climate change, species at risk in that habitat, woodlands and woodlots that are impacted, water courses crossed, water ha or wildlife habitats, uh, movement and corridor crossing, wetlands in impacted and provincially or regionally significant wetlands impacted. Next slide. In terms of cultural environment, we're looking at supporting the culture of collaboration where county transportation network intersects with areas of local importance. So where, where are the areas of local importance and how are they impacted? And we're also trying to provide uh, a mechanism that is, is clear and transparent guides investments decisions in the transportation network. And so the criteria we're looking at here, heritage property or buildings impacted, impact to heritage landscapes, uh, cemeteries that are impacted, sites of archeological potential, utility corridors, and uh, potential for ride well or transit connections or business partnerships, and the compatibility with provincial county and city policies, as well as the conservation area framework standards. Next slide, please. Socioeconomic environment criteria. So we're trying to support economic development. And that means does the alternative have an impact on farming activity, on local businesses? In terms of existing businesses and industry, does it open up opportunities for new business or expanded business and industry? Uh, are there opportunities for community to draw new business? And then does the alternative support and improve tourism, which is significant in the area? Next slide, please. And then the final. Responsible when making investment decisions. And the criteria we look at are capital cost, order magnitude, operational and maintenance costs, and are there any funding opportunities through any possible grants? Next slide, please. So in terms of the problem and the evaluation, uh, the next slides, we will walk through the individual uh, areas of concern and talk about the problems, the opportunities, and how the uh, high level evaluation, uh, the high level outcomes work. Next slide, please. So area one, uh, which is the Wellington Road 7 between Laura and Salem and Highway 6 Junction. Uh, this was previously identified in the development charges as a problem area, and we've confirmed that it's projected to be well over capacity by 2041. We will look at expanding on infrastructure. There is a potential to re uh, widen and add one direction, one lane per direction, as well as look at TSM improvements. Adding additional infrastructure 
is more complicated. Uh, opportunities to add improved parallel capacity are limited, uh, but there are some issues associated with um, traffic in the Lower and Fergus that we'll discuss later. Next slide, please. So in terms of the evaluation, each of the individual criteria within the criteria group was assessed for the uh, appropriate alternatives that were considered. So in this case, TSM and widen existing uh, were uh, evaluated based on the individual criteria. The outcomes were summarized or compiled for uh, the transportation, natural environment, cultural environment, socioeconomic and cost. And from that evaluation, the widening of the existing road came out as the preliminary deferred, primarily on its ability to address the transportation issues uh, and the order of magnitude problem. Uh, while it is slightly more or more expensive, uh, the ability to address those transportation uh, won the day for that uh, alternative. So the alternative solution is to expand infrastructure, provide additional one lane per direction, uh, Salem to Highway 6, and also uh, consider undertaking a technical study to review the impacts of potential use of Wellington Road 17 and 7 as a truck signed bypass of Fergus and Alora on the design and elements of both roads. Next slide, please. Area 2, Wellington Road 18, uh, between Wellington Road 21 in Alora and Wellington Road 43 in Fergus. It is projected to be well over capacity by 2041 and with significant delay and near capacity between Highway 6 and Wellington Road 43 with moderate to significant delay. And these issues were identified previously in the development charges of 2017. The opportunities that we looked at here, the transportation systems managed by modifying the existing corridors, uh, new turn lanes, repurposing of pavement within the cross sections expanding infrastructure to one lane in each direction for each of those uh, problem areas and adding infrastructure new north south bypass to address highway 6 constraint and new east west bypass to address wellington road 18 constraint uh, the wellington road 18 was previously identified in the development charges next slide please so in comparing or evaluating the tsm the widened existing and the provision of new infrastructure uh, the outcome uh, when looking at the individual criteria and then the criteria groups was that TSM and widened existing were both preferred depending on the section of roadway. Uh, the new infrastructure was identified as being costly, uh, but keeping in mind we are at a high level uh, review at this master plan stage. Next slide. So the preliminary alternative solution coming out of our assessment, TSM, to be applied between Metcalf and Kirtland, and that means restricting parking and providing center left turn lane and expanding infrastructure. Kirtland to Tan Robert to provide an additional lane per direction, as well as Highway 6 to Highway 43 uh, to provide an additional lane in each direction. Next slide, please. Area concern three is Wellington Road 32 between Wellington Road 124 and Highway 7. The problem statement is that it's over capacity significantly by 2041. The critical link was identified south of Steedsville Rail Road adjacent to the market. Uh, this was previously identified as a problem area in the development charges. Again, the opportunities considered TSM to widen and formalize the shoulders, providing more space for vehicles and for alternative modes, expanding infrastructure uh, by adding a lane and adding infrastructure um, opportunities to add or improve parallel capacity was limited so that was not carried forward next slide please the high level assessment compared the tsm and the widening existing they uh, each had their benefits the transportation uh, was uh, service was better by widening the existing uh, but the cost obviously was was higher but in the balance of all the criteria assessed uh, it was TSM and widening existing were not distinguishable. The preliminary alternative uh, was is to uh, implement TSM, pave and widen the shoulders, provide localized improvements south of Steedsville, and then monitor the situation uh, for any emerging issues. Next slide, please. 
Area four, Wellington Road 46 between Maltby Road and Wellington Road 34, again, over capacity by 2041. Uh, this was previously identified in the development charges and is consistent with the finding of the specific EA, as well as the Guelph Wellington Transportation Study. The opportunities that were evaluated, uh, the TSM to improve cycling and pedestrian access, uh, bike lanes, to look at expanding infrastructure, adding one lane in each direction between uh, Malty and Wellington Road 34, be consistent with the uh, north and south segments joining that section. And to look at add infrastructure, the potential improvements to parallel roads, the complication being that they're not under county, county jurisdiction, but they are potentials. Next slide, please. So the assessment, uh, looked at TSM, wide existing, and use or improved parallel infrastructure. Uh, each of the criteria and criteria groups assessed again. TSM and widening existing came out as equally preferred. The parallel infrastructure uh, was limited by its cost to improve and its ability to address the actual problem in terms of diversion away from the Highway 46 or Wellington Road 46 corridor. So move forward, next slide, please. So the preliminary alternative solution being presented is expand the infrastructure by providing additional lane in each direction. And the evaluation completed confirms the Gordon Street environmental assessment that undertook more detailed analysis. And the preferred solution is consistent with the Wellington Road EA. Next slide, please. Area of concern five, Wellington Road 124 between Legion Waterloo and City of Guelph boundaries. Problem statement, again, to be over capacity. That's consistent with the finding of the Wellington Road 124 EA in 2019, as well as the 2005 Guelph Wellington Transportation Study. The evaluation uh, has not been completed because of the status of the 124 EA. Given that the problem statement has been confirmed and that the EA took the evaluation to a more, a more refined level, not a high strategic assessment, but a, a quantitative uh, evaluation criteria, that the recommendations from the 124 environmental assessment uh, are being carried forward. Next slide, please. And now into the two uh, moderately uh, moderate problem areas, uh, Wellington Road 21 between Wellington Road 7 and the regional water boundary. Uh, and approaching capacity by 2041. It was previously identified in the development charges. We looked at TSM to urbanize the corridor to support cycling and pedestrian access at the east end uh, towards Wellington Road 7, and then uh, developing a signage strategy to promote alternative use of the parallel facility, or expand infrastructure to add one lane per direction. Uh, and uh, this needs to be considered uh, in concert with the potential benefit of Wellington Road 7 widening in the Laura Fergus bypass. Uh, we'll come to that recommendation about the bypass in later slides, but uh, traffic using Wellington Road 21 may be diverting in the area because of the other capacity constraints. And if those are relieved, uh, we, might, we might not have the same uh, issue on Wellington Road 21. Next slide, please. The TSM and Widen Existing were the direct uh, alternatives that addressed the capacity issue. TSM was preferred on the, on the balance of the criteria evaluation. And so that's the preferred to formalize and widen uh, and pave shoulders, and then to monitor the situation over the uh, longer term to confirm that issues don't emerge. Next slide, please. And finally, area number seven, the Wellington Road 86 between Wellington Road 10 and Wellington Road 85. It's expected to approach capacity by 2041. This is a uh, newly identified uh, issue uh, that was not identified in the DC. Uh, so we've got additional growth and we've got more pressures on the system than were accounted for before. And so this is an emerging problem now. We looked at TSM, uh, by formalizing shoulders and providing dedicated turn lanes in the community of uh, Dorking. Uh, the other is to expand infrastructure, add one lane per direction, or add infrastructure 
uh, the, the opportunities for parallel, parallel uh, capacity are limited. Uh, the bullet at the bottom there is, is a mistake in, in formatting and content. So it's not related to a lower for the sale. Next slide, please. So in, in looking at TSM versus the widened existing, the uh, TSM on the balance is preferred. So we're, we are proposing moving forward with formalizing and widening paved shoulders and providing auxiliary left turn lanes at the major intersection in Dorking, and then continue with a monitoring program that uh, tracks any emerging issues. Next slide, please. So one of the one of the uh, principal issues, or uh, is uh, in the area of Alor and Fergus, uh, we've identified problems on Wellington Road 18. We've identified problems on Wellington Road 7. We're aware of the uh, signage for an alternative truck route uh, recently implemented. And the question is, how do we determine if a bypass is needed? Next slide. And so when we're looking at what's you know what's the justification for a bypass. Uh, Community issue is identified, and that issue could be volume, uh, volume of traffic, traffic versus the capacity. It could be the vehicle composition and distribution in the community. So is, it, is heavy truck the problem? The safety and speed, which obviously we were looking at uh, that earlier in the study uh, about community issues. And there are, are there sensitive land uses and, and how many and where are they? Whether they be schools, whether they're businesses, whether they're um, environmental areas. So other considerations, uh, you know, are there opportunities for alternative capacity that would effectively serve the identified travel demand and minimize out of way travel? If it's not a if it's not a route that's obvious and not a route that saves time, then it may not be effective. And the other thing is we need to look at the other non-transportation impacts, uh, the impacts of any uh, new infrastructure on the natural environment, socioeconomic, cultural and the cost. Next slide, please. So in terms of uh, bypass candidate locations and potential issues in Fergus, uh, we have a truck traffic issue on Highway 6. We have potential safety and speed issues identified on uh, the section of Wellington Road 18 between uh, Highway 6 and Wellington Road 43. And we have the capacity capacity issue uh, on Wellington Road 7 and on Highway 6 through Fergus and Wellington Road 18 between Wellington Road 21 and 43. In terms of the Allura condition, uh, truck traffic issue, potential noise and capacity issue on Wellington Road 18 and Wellington Road 21 to the west. Next slide, please. So in looking at the candidate locations, there have been studies. Uh, the Sent a Wellington uh, master plan recently, uh, looked at some of the issues associated with truck traffic. Uh, in terms of our master, road master action plan, the significant, the problem identified uh, is twofold. There's a significant east-west travel condition along Wellington Road 18 between Fergus and Alora, and there's a significant north-south travel along Highway 6 through Fergus. And it's estimated that trips are already diverting in the network, which is putting pressure on Wellington Road 7, which is one of our problem statements. So we have the Wellington Road 18 capacity issue uh, from the west in Salem to uh, Highway 6 in Fergus. We have a high volume of truck traffic on Highway 7. We have a speeding concern, and we have potential noise exposure for sensitive receptors. Next slide, please. So what alternatives are there? The existing signage, uh, signed route, uh, takes traffic from Highway 6 along 17 uh, and directs it down Highway 7. Uh, obviously, there are, uh, that's one alternative, and there are, and it is not without impact. Alternative two uh, is looking, we identified this from the center west. Um, with one of the alternatives to direct Highway 6 off of uh, its current alignment south of Fergus, bringing along and then back to Highway 6 uh, north of Fergus, roughly at um, 
Nickel Road 15. But there is another, that's still a north-south issue. The east-west issue has still not been addressed. Uh, so we looked at an alternative three, which is a partial bypass uh, taking from Wellington Road 29, a new bridge crossing, connecting to Nickel Road 15 and bringing it across. Now that, that addresses the east-west, but not the north-south. Truck issues will remain. And then we have the existing or the future problem already identified, Wellington Road 7, resulting in some diversion uh, from 21, which means more traffic. All of these alternatives end up placing more pressure on Wellington Road 7, and it's already been identified as a, a, an ongoing concern in 2041. Next slide. Next slide, please. Yes, thanks. So in terms of the recommendations, sorry, in terms of the preliminary recommendations, uh, the Wellington Road 17-7 has been signed as a truck route, it's been implemented. Uh, widening Wellington Road 7 to two lanes in each direction between Salem and Highway 6 is something, regardless of whether there's a bypass, is necessary to address forecast demands in the future. Widening sections of Wellington Road 18 between Kirtland and Ken Robert and between Highway 6 and Scotland has been identified as a preliminary preferred and uh, as preferred over a bypass. But we need to protect an opportunity to extend Wellington Road 29 across Grand River and the East Bypass of Anderson Street to connect with Nickel Road 15. I think one of the, one of the important next steps is that we're proposing that a detailed area study be undertaken in coordination with the ministry to confirm area needs and the role that the alternatives play in mitigating east-west and north-south issues. Uh, each of these alternative bypasses will result in a redistribution of traffic through the community and may place stresses and, and issues, create new issues that need to be identified and the assessment and evaluation done in that, in the fullness of that uh, detailed information. Next slide, please. And I'll turn it back to Dennis to discuss the next steps. Uh, thanks very much, Paul. So if you could just go to the next slide. Uh, so I we presented a lot of information to you today, uh, and we're going to use this opportunity to engage some of your feedback. So after I go over these next steps, I'll turn it over to, to Zar to uh, facilitate some discussion of some of your questions. So where do we go from here? Uh, we need to hear your feedback. Uh, and based on what we hear, uh, we're going to complete the evaluation of alternatives and select the preferred solution. Uh, we'll refine strategic level costs for the preferred solution and identify key priorities. So it's a long period between now and 2041. So what's the right order of things to occur? We'll develop an implementation plan, including how things get funded and a project schedule and identify which studies, which of these projects need to undergo further study as part of the environmental process or environmental assessment process. So that will identify sort of a key list of next steps for roadway infrastructure. Uh, along this, we've got another, another of other elements to our study. We'll, identify, we'll finalize some of the short-term operational and safety improvements and speed management guidelines that we've been working on. We'll take a look at the pub, public transit and identify next steps uh, for Ridewell as well uh, and uh, complete the report uh, and present to council uh, in the fall of 2021. 